contact me at timscomputerfix.net to find out how you can ship me your laptop for repair. Hey guys, Tim here again, timscomputerfix.net. Got a pretty good one here for you. This will be a very interesting. Uh, I had a customer who decided to go on PC Parts Picker website and just pick him some parts. Never built a computer in his life. Who decided they were going to buy these parts and go ahead and just give it a try and see what they can do. The customer claims he's doing, you know, good bit of research on it and felt like he could uh, accomplish it. Uh, and give him kudos for trying, that's for sure. So first, before I go into any more of this little story, I'm going to show you the parts that he purchased. Uh, and at the time of this uh, video, uh, these these are pretty bleeding edge parts that he purchased here. So I want to start off with this. This is the core. This is the core i7 X series. This is the i7 7800X. This is a LGA 2066. This is a six core 12 thread part. This is the new lineup of the Intel uh, X series uh, at the time of this video and it's, those runs at 3.5 gigahertz clock speeds. Very nice processor there, right? He also went with this monstrosity of a, a beautiful motherboard. This is the Republic of Gamers uh, Rampage 6 Extreme. Um, this is a beast of a board. It has 10 gigabit LAN, 802.11ad Wi-Fi. It's got a live dash OLED, and this baby supports up to three M.2 SSDs. This is a EATX motherboard with the size of, and this is important, 30.5 centimeters by 12.7 centimeters. But uh, this is uh, a cutting edge board for the at the time of this video. A very nice uh, motherboard at that. So that's what he went with there. Graphics card wise, uh, he went with this bad boy, the GTX 1080 Ti. This is the Republic of Gamers. This is the overclocked edition. Yeah, this is a uh, $829 video card right here at the time of this video. This is probably a $300 motherboard, I would say. Um, the processor, I think, was around $300, I think. Um, so, but I'm not done yet. This is the Snow Silent version. It's a uh, 1,050 watt power supply that he's going for here. Okay, wait for it. He also has, and he this box, uh, let me go ahead and tell you now, none of these parts are in these boxes because he has attempted to build his own computer and now it's in my shop. So you can kind of guess what might be going on. In this box, which I was wondering, what the heck is this? And it, I don't really see it here, what it says, not really. And then I see it. And then I go, oh my gosh, you gotta be kidding me. This is a Quadro P4000 from NVIDIA. This is a workstation video card. Why in the world would he have a Quadro video card, which is really for like, uh, you know, rendering software, not rendering, but um, architectural software like Maya, uh, things like that, um, animation, um, things like that. I don't think too many games are com even compatible with the Quadro card, is, uh, but he has a he, Quadro card and a uh, 1080 tie. Okay. Um, We'll have to address that also. So, you know, there's almost $2,000 worth of video cards just sitting here. And then he has the, uh, the Evo 960 so M.2, 250 gig NVMe M.2 card here. 
um, 250 gig. He also has 64 gigs of uh, 64 gigs of DDR DDR4. This is a Trident Z memory. Um, so 64 gigs, pretty good. Windows 10, right here. Okay, so here's the case that he decided to go with here. And notice it's short. It's, this is the Enthu Pro series case. Now, don't get me wrong. This is a decent case. By the way, he has installed also, I don't have the boxes for this, but there's a custom, there's a, a closed loop you know, water cooling system in here that he's installed also. So uh, anyways, let's just um, pop this open real quick and have a quick look inside. We'll open up the case. It's got tempered glass. It, like I say, again, it's really not a bad case for what he's trying to do here. So I haven't even turned on this computer and I'm not gonna dare turn this on. I'm gonna show you why. Here's pretty much what he has done. He's got his NZXT radiator up top here, which is okay. The water block slash pump uh, mounted here. Feels like it's pretty secure on there. He's got his four sticks of memory in here. Um, I can see that. It looks like uh, I'm gonna give you guys a closer look at this. Uh, I'm just going over some things I can see. I can see an M dot card here. His M dot two card is in. Um, I can see his power here. It looks like it's plugged in okay. Looks like he's got his uh, 1080 tie here um, into the slot. Hmm. And one of the very first things that I notice here is that. Uh, the second uh, power connector to the 1080 tie is not plugged in. I do see a cable here that goes to that. So possibly he had it plugged in, don't know. But uh, here's the part that's a little bit confusing to me. Uh, down here is, uh, in the second PCI Express slot is the uh, P4000 NVIDIA Quadro. And, um, you know, they're not going to work together. He doesn't really have an SLI configuration here. I'm not really sure what the purpose of having both cards in here is. Uh, this is a single card slot card, and this is a, a dual slot card, obviously. Um, so, you know, I scratch my head a little bit on this one. Uh, if we look here, um, you can see. You know, everything kind of looks okay back here. Everything looks okay back here. Looks like that's installed okay. You can see everything looks okay, sort of, on this, uh, the video, two video cards. So, anyway, uh, you know, all that, you know, you kind of notice some of this stuff. Just, just the fact that he's uh, the video cards unplugged is, and you know, who knows, who knows if this processor heat sink is mounted correctly. We'll have to investigate, but I, that's not the real reason why I'm not powering this up. So I'm going to lay this down, and I'm going to give you a closer look and uh, show you exactly what I discovered with this. I'm going to do my best to show you this one-handed here. But, once again, right here, you can see the way the card was not plugged in. And looking really close at how the motherboard is mounted to the case. But, so, you know, I'm looking down over here. And, what do you want? What are you doing? I'm working, kitty. I'm working. I'm working. Thank you. So if you notice right down here, you can already see, okay, there's one screw that's, that's uh, screwed, you know, it's got the motherboard held down. 
Um, kind of hard to see these other ones with everything in the way, but I can see, don't know if you can, but right down there is another screw that looks like it's, uh, you know, it's got the motherboard screwed down. And then I start looking around between these cards. Then I start to notice here that there's no screw in that uh, motherboard screw hole there. And then over here, I notice that there's no screw hole down and no screw down in that hole for the motherboard to hold the motherboard into place. Um, come back, look this way. Uh, there is one there. It doesn't look like it's the right screw, but there is one there. So I'm going, huh? So why aren't there screws in there? So just for the heck of it, I got a motherboard screw out and I tried to put those in to those holes there. And they're not, and the screw isn't catching on anything. So it's free spinning. Although I do see the grommet, I do see the standoffs that there for the screw, but the motherboard doesn't appear to be laying flush. So I start investigating on this side and I start noticing, start noticing that, uh, wow, these are the, these are the grommets, the rubber grommets that, that you feed your wires through for wire management. And I'm going, why are those covered up so much? And I don't know if you can see it down here too. There, there, there it is again. And the motherboard is coming all the way over, covering those. And then when I reach my hand down there, there's no gap at all here. There's no gap between the motherboard and that uh, grommet. And why is the grommet covered like that? And then, on top of that, I start to notice other things, okay? And let me see if I can get you the angle that, uh, that will show you this with that video card there. Let me see if I can get this down to where you can see this. Um, maybe, not, maybe that's not the best angle, but if you look closely that video card is not sitting straight this video card is sitting at an angle like this it's not level it's cocked down like this this is the lower end this is higher than this end something's not right there so anyway let me stand this up and then i'm going to show you what the back side of behind this case looks like. Okay, I cracked open the back side of the case here. There's the socket to the motherboard there. Uh, <laughs> oh, look, there's a hard drive buried in here. So he does have a hard drive. I don't know what size that is, but that's good. There's power supply mounted right, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's mounted okay. But let's take a closer look at this. So here are those grommets. Here are the grommets here, and I can't even push my finger through that because the motherboard is all the way over to here, right? And here's, here's the dead giveaway, okay? On this side, I can't even get my finger in here, so there's a very small gap, which is okay, that's normal, right? But if you look on the other side, I can get my whole finger in here. So that tells me even more that this motherboard is cocked. It's flush and right on this side. But it's not here. So that board is sitting funny. And it's sitting high on this side. That's why you can't get the screws down into where, where they're supposed to be on this side of the board. So, I know that there's a problem 
with how this board is mounted in this case. This Fantex Enthu Pro was listed with PC Parts Picker to go along with the motherboard and all of the parts that, that this customer picked. This is an EATX motherboard. This case in the specs says that it supports EATX motherboards. However, this, this motherboard is 30.5 centimeters long or wide. If you look closely on the specs to this case, it only support, it supports EATX up to like 20, 26 centimeters. So this case will, is not designed to hold a motherboard of this size. And that's why it's all gapped up. And you know, to be fair, he should have stopped when he realized he was having troubles getting this motherboard mounted. But he pressed on and he pressed on. And because, uh, you know, I guess he just wanted to get his build done and he was excited. And I can understand that. But let me flip this over here again. But what I am, oh goodness, she's got some weight to her. Yes, she does. But <clears throat> here are some of the things that I am concerned with. The video cards, both of them, are sitting at an angle. I don't know what kind of force was used here. Oh, here's another thing. Let me show you guys this. Here's something that I am also very concerned with about this. Uh, there's a, uh, you know, what comes with some cards or cases is a bracket that's supposed to stabilize the video card once it's in place. You can see this bracket, how it's going all the way up and it's, it's secured, you know, here. Uh, but this is so tight up against these fans, I can't even turn them. I can't even turn these fans. It, this is pushed right up against these fans. See, I can turn this one, but I cannot turn that one. It's stuck, that's pushing up against it. This one, can't turn it. I can move it a little bit. But what concerns me, for one thing, that this card's been wedged in here all cockeyed, right? He's put power to this, he says, with these fans all, with this all pressed up against the fans, and it's very concerning. You know, this is a lot of expensive equipment at, the t at this time of this video, and uh, man, I, I just sure hope nothing's damaged. I know the board's probably been flexed because he's probably forced this video card down in there so it'll snap into place. He's trying to get it all right and trying to probably use a little bit too much force. I hope not. I hope I'm wrong. But uh, my job now is to uh, disassemble, pull all of these parts out, get all these parts out of this case, and... Uh, you know, pull out this water loop here and let me test the basic components so we can see if, if anything got damaged during this build. And that's what we're going to do now. So here we go. Okay, guys, this is heart wrenching. Let's see if I can show you. I had to take all this top part off just to get the. Uh, radiator out it was some design it was getting stuck so i had to just take it apart but this gave me a good view here of how this motherboard is mounted um and it's it's not good um you can see here the big gap compared to to here So that board is just flexed hard. Power supply came out fine. There's your power supply. The 1080 tie. Fans appear to be free flowing. It looks like that's okay. There's 
no real damage at all to the card. Uh, so that's a good thing. Um, it, when it came out, it, 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 they, they weren't seated all the way. The cards were not seated all the way. There's the Quadro. Unbelievable. A 1080 tie-in, a Quadro P4000. <clears throat> I don't think uh, he quite understood <clears throat> what you know he was doing with the video card part of it. I need to find out exactly what he's doing with his computer uh, so I can decide, tell him which one to keep. I'm going to tell him to keep the 1080 tie, though. Um, I mentioned before a six terabyte. He he got a NAS drive, a six terabyte NAS drive, and and uh, that's what he's using there for that. Okay, here's the radiator, the rad for the NZXT uh, water cooling, and the NZXT fans, and then in here, of course, is the motherboard. And with the motherboard, I did, I did uh, remove the processor just to be sure that it was inserted properly. There was no bent pins. Everything appeared to be installed properly with that. The board itself was, is not warped or bent. It's perfectly straight. So whatever tension that was on it, you know, didn't appear to do any or much of any at all uh, damage uh, to the board itself. Uh, uh, this is the the uh, adapter slot for his M.2 NVMe. That was not seated all the way either. That goes right here. Uh, I think he's going to be in good shape. So what my next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, just prop this up on top of this box and I'm going to mount, I'm going to go ahead and remount the water block and I'm going to just temporarily mount the fans onto the radiator and then I'll just provide uh, external power to the cooling system while it's a, and then just fire this motherboard up out of the box just to be sure that every that this thing posts and everything seems to be okay before I start to put it in to the obsidian case and that way we'll know pretty much that uh, he has no damaged parts so again, everything looked like it's in decent shape once it all came out of the case. So I think, I think we're gonna be okay there and we can proceed with the build.